what's up everybody it's your girl janaya i know welcome or welcome back to my channel where it's all about faith lifestyle and whatever else the lord says i am here today it's day 14th it's january 14th of 2024 um so you know it's day 14 today uh we're continuing in just the things that we are i'm sorry my, that we're praying for and Today, the prayer is that divine justice would come forth, that righteous judgment would come forth. Uh, and we're going to get into some scripture um, and get a little bit more specific. The first scripture I'm going to take us to is Numbers 27 in the NLT version. I'm going to be reading from my computer. So if you see me like kind of looking off, that's why. One day, a petition, again, sorry, before I get started, it's Numbers 27. We're going to be reading through 1 through verse 11, and it says, One day, a petition was presented by the daughters of Zelophehad, Zelophehad, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. Their father, Zelophiad, was a descendant of Hefner, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, son of Joseph. These women stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, and or the temple, the tribal leaders, and the entire community at the entrance of the tabernacle. Our father died in the wilderness, they said. He was not among Korah's followers who rebelled against the Lord. He died because of his own sin, but he had no sons. Why should the name of our father disappear from his clan just because he had no sons? Give us property along with the rest of our relatives. So Moses brought their case before the Lord and the Lord replied to Moses, the claim of the daughters of Zelophehad is legitimate. You must give them a grant of land along with their father's relatives. Assign them the property that would have been their, given to their father. And give the instructions to the people of Israel. If a man dies and he has no son, then give his inheritance to his daughters. And if he has no daughter either, transfer his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. But if he's if he, his father has no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan. This is a legal requirement for the people of Israel, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Now in this, uh, these women boldly went before Moses, Eleazar, the priests, the tribal leaders, and the entire community at the entrance of the tabernacle to request what was what we would believe to be rightfully theirs but in those times when you didn't have a son your name stopped even now if you don't have a son your name stops unless your daughters continue you know with your name however the lord made it so that even if a man did not have a son he and they had daughters that the inheritance would still be given over to their daughters excuse me, or their relatives or whoever else um, was in their line of family. From what we can see is righteous judgment, right? The Lord could have said, mm, give it to the next male in the family. But the Lord knew, no, what is rightfully theirs needs to be given unto them. And that's what we're praying for today, that whatever is rightfully ours, oh Lord, give it unto me. Make it cause it to make its way back to me righteously judge the matter righteously judge the situation and give what is due me to me now i wanted to talk about also paul and silas in acts 16 and 25 um through 26 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake earthquake so that the foundations of the prison 
prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Today, let us also be praying for those that are incarcerated who literally need righteous judgment to come forth so that they may be released from the prisons that they are in, from the holds, the shackles that are imprisoning them, okay? Some people have been unjustly uh, put into prison. Some people have been unjustly accused of things. And we are praying that, oh Lord, bring about your righteous judgment, not just in our own lives and even for those that we may know, but let us bring bring about a righteous judgment for those that are incarcerated, that should not be incarcerated, who's um, who has been unjustly um, charged for things that they didn't do or um, charges stacked up onto on one another that was unrighteous, that wasn't right. It wasn't them that did this, but they were still sent to jail because of it. Um, I have family members that are incarcerated, some justly, some and a few unjustly, or un, yeah, unjust. It's an unjust incarceration, there we go. Um, and so we're praying that those that are imprisoned be given righteous judgment that the lord would send forth whatever whoever needs to be sent forth to release them from these prisons to release them from these shackles that even as they're in prison that the lord would cause a praise a worship to be in their mouth until the day that they are released and the same for us that even as we're waiting for a righteous judgment to come across the table in our own situations for our own situations to be judged righteously and for us to be given um the things that are right that are just that are i'm sorry that are do us just like the daughters of Zelophehad that while we're waiting, that we're not waiting in bitterness, but that we're waiting with a praise on our lips, that we're waiting with praise in our hearts, that we're worshiping God, that we are not becoming bitter or we're becoming weary and well-doing, even if we're praying and fasting for a family member to be released from jail, that we're waiting for righteous judgment to come forth and waiting on the Lord to move on the matter that we would not become weary and well-doing or bitter in the wait, but that we would wait and we would wait with praise and worship on our lips, that we would wait well for the Lord to bring about the judgment that is due for, for the Lord to bring about the rewards the freedom that is due ourselves and those that we know that are incarcerated or waiting for a righteous judgment to come through. So let us be praying this today. Let us pray that the judgment of the Lord would come forth on our behalf, on others' behalf, that those that are um, incarcerated wrongly, that the Lord would bring to pass or bring forth their judgment that the Lord would bring forth a righteous judgment, that it would turn, he would turn the hearts of the judge, he would turn the hearts of the lawyers, he would turn the hearts of whoever's heart needs to be turned for their release to come into fruition. We are praying and asking the Lord that the judgment that he has set on the table would even come forth even in a sooner matter than what we're believing him for, that if we're believing by the end of this year, that even by the beginning, but by next month or the middle of this year or whatever else we're believing him for, that we would know that the Lord is going to bring it to pass just as he said he would. So let us be in prayer about these things. May the righteous judgment of the Lord come forth in every situation that it is due in every place that it is due, in every area that it's due, whether it be to avenge his children, to release his children, to um, defend his children, 
Lord, let the righteous judgment come forth in Jesus' name. Let us be in prayer. Let us not cease. Let us pray without ceasing. And um, yeah, that's day 14. I pray you all are well. And I will see you guys tomorrow for day 15. Love you. Bye.